Last time, we defined two types of inputs, rotate and shift. We then created a signal of these inputs. In this video, we will be using that signal of inputs to move and rotate a tetromino around the screen. Let's start by creating a new module called state. Then, let's import basics, exposing everything our latest module controller, exposing everything. We'll be drawing the screen, so we'll need to import graphics.collage. For convenience, I'm going to expose everything. I'll import graphics.element, exposing the element type. I'm really only doing this for the main function because I prefer to annotate all of my functions. I'll also import signal, exposing the signal type. And finally, I'll import tetromino, exposing the tetromino type. All right, now that we have all of the imports out of the way, let's create a type alias called state. This record will contain all of the information about a Tetris game. We'll be updating this record several times throughout the rest of the series. For now, it will contain a single field, which happens to be the tetromino that is currently falling. I'm going to call this falling. Let's create a default state that we can use. I'm going to use an eyepiece for now. Alright, let's compile. Now let's write a view function. The view function is going to take a state and produce an element. Again, we'll be using the collage function just like before. This is in the collage module. This time, I'm going to make our collage a little bigger than before, 800 by 600. In fact, let's go ahead and create two values, screen width and screen height. The collage will contain a falling form, which we'll define above in a let expression. We'll use tetromino.toForm on state.falling. And we're done. Let's refresh. And it looks like the compiler is happy. Next, let's write a function called update. It is going to take in an input and a state and produce the state that results from applying that input. All right, so now we want to match on each of the different types of inputs we could receive, so we'll use a case expression. Case input of, and the first case we'll write is rotate. Since we're in the case here, we're able to pattern match on the constructors. So I'll put rotate here, and then I'll put in a little arrow, that's a dash and then a greater than. And if we happen to be rotate, I'm gonna create a new record, and this new record is going to contain everything that the state record had, except I'm going to update the falling field. I'm gonna set it to be equal to tetromino.rotate, applied to state dot falling. This will take the state that was already, or sorry, this will take the tetromino that was already in state and rotate it. Next, in the case of shift, we'll produce a new record, which is the same as state, except the falling field will be equal to the tetromino shifted by amount. All right. Let's try compiling this. And it looks like we're good to go. Okay, let's take a moment and think about what it is that we need to do with these functions. Starting with the default state, we want to call update each time a new input is received from the input's signal. We'll pass our current state and input into update, 
and that'll give us the next state. All we need now is a function that does exactly that. And guess what? We're in luck because that function already exists. It is called fold p, and it is part of the signal module. Fold p expects a function which takes in an a and a state and produces a new state. We're going to use update here. It then expects a state as an initial value. We'll use default state. And finally, it expects a signal of type a. Because we're using our update function, that type is actually input. So we can use inputs. That's the function we wrote in the last video. Finally, this gives us a signal of states. All we have to do now is convert those states to elements. Once again, we'll call upon signal.map to convert values between the two types. Rather than using show, we'll use the view function we wrote earlier. All right, let's go on and refresh. And look, there on the screen we have a line piece. If we tap the up key, it rotates 90 degrees. And if we press the other arrow keys, it moves left, right, and down. All right, just for sanity checks, let's go ahead and try another piece. I'll just swap out the I in our default state with J. We'll refresh, and there we go. We have a J piece that is moving around and rotating. Well done. We're making some real progress. In the next video, we'll continue by adding a new input type called tick, which will force our tetromino to fall down without input from the user.